morning, fellow educators. Good morning, students. Mayung Buntag. Uh, I'm glad to be with you. Thank you, Miss Kadimas, for everything and for a wonderful introduction you did before the start of the webinar. The quotation you made was actually somehow um, to be with you this morning. My reflection, my sharing for, for all of you this morning is going to cover three simple, three simple parts. I'll begin with what I call C, where we will take a look at the situation around us, and then we proceed with judge. We will assess how the situation is and what we can do move, moving forward. And the third is act, which is about moving forward. Given the condition, the circumstances we have, what do we do? How can we possibly live in the midst of the circumstances and the conditions for us to remain faithful, for us to remain hopeful in a world that has become what's going on. I'd like to share my screen and begin, although we already had a wonderful prayer done by, done by I think, a pupil of Foundation University, I suppose, and the wonderful um, honoring of the country done by the choir of I would like to begin this morning with a um, beautiful reflection song that I like all of us to to reflect on. Okay, so we let us let us start with this. Let me know if you can hear the the music that I'll be playing.
So once again, good morning, everyone, students, faculty, friends, and believers in hope and hopeful in one's faith. I was given by Tita Early and Dr. Kalumpang the topic, Faith in an Anxious World. But as I was developing the, the topic, as I was working on my presentation and working on my slides, I realized the situation in our world today that only needs faith, but also needs hope. But also, it also the situation also requires us to also have charity. In other words, the three theological virtues are what we actually need in an anxious world. However, I would like to I would like to cover a much wider scope in our reflection. I'd like to begin by sharing with you some thoughts about hope in an anxious world. I've been giving I've been giving countless reflections as a result of the pandemic because I think one of the one of the reasons one of the causes um, that has led the world and people everyone practically to be anxious is COVID-19. We were so afraid because the enemy cannot be cannot be seen the enemy is invisible we thought it would be best if we if we fight it by equipping ourselves with trust in the Lord hope in what he can do for us and love for what for everyone our love for everyone so we take a look at hope in an anxious world and see um, how we can how we can survive as I was mentioning a while ago we we begin with C meaning we take a look at the situation and then we proceed with judge we assess the situation around us to find out how we can move forward and we end with act so we begin now I'd like to first share with you glimpses of troubled lives and societies this is one of the slides that will allow us to realize what what is going on what goes on around us what goes on in the world today if you take a look at the picture on the screen you can see several conditions first we we see definitely covid-19 and that is why we can see the the closure sign for the past 2 years businesses have been going on and off business establishments could not predict when the next lockdown would be no. people couldn't be sure if when they wake up in the morning they still have jobs people couldn't be sure if when they wake up in the morning they still have means to support themselves food on their table etc that, that's one that's one one of the many factors causing troubles in our lives in our societies another picture that is shown on the screen tells us about ecological disintegrity ecological discombobulation um, pollution in the environment um, illegal logging etc another situation shows that is shown on the screen has something to do with poverty as a result of the circumstances a result as a result of the conditions in the world People have been begging for food. People have been begging to survive. And you know, I, um, I was, I was, um, the, the past three months, I've been very busy going to the north, trying to share what I, what I could, what I can, to those who have become victims of typhoon death. And the first time, you know, in my, in my life in Negros Oriental, the first time. It was the first time when I saw people begging for money, begging for food, begging for anything from Ba'is all the way up. And it, it was quite disturbing because we've never seen something like this before. No, but poverty is such a reality um, that's troubling our lives and our societies. Another thing is, well, divide between peoples and nations. Currently, there is a 
war going on in Europe. Russia has invaded Ukraine and it has stalled somehow life in Europe. It has affected everyone. The, the prices of fuel in the Philippines have gone up, I think, as a result of the war in Europe. Another reality that is confronting us is how human dignity is taken at the borders between nations. People, migrants have been crossing from one nation to the next in search of a better life. And how these people are treated is really disturbing and alarming. And so, my dear fellow educators and students, these are the realities in the world today. And I'd like to believe these are some of the many reasons why our world has become so anxious. Our world has become somehow bothered. Our world has been so discombobulated. So much is going on around us. So many problems. So many selfish motives that have caused all of these. Pollution, you know, name it, we have it. Um, violation of human rights and dignity, etc. Glimpses of troubled lives and societies, these are just what we call tips of the ice of an of, of icebergs, no, or the, the tip of an iceberg. We can see more in the course of in the course of our reflection. And this is the reason why Pope Francis, no, in his papal encyclical Fratelli Tutti, tells us about the situation today. In chapter one of Fratelli Tutti, he tells us about the dark clouds over a closed world. He wrote this at the height of the pandemic. Now, let me just, let me just explain to you some, some fundamental terms now. A papal encyclical is a papal letter sent to all bishops of the church to instruct them on certain matters, to tell them what to do on certain matters, and to clarify concerns that seem to be very vague. No. So um, I'm sharing this because um, I, I know there are also non-Catholics in the group for, for, for our better understanding. So it's a paper letter. Now, what about Fratelli Tutti? Fratelli Tutti is the third papal letter that Pope Francis has written in his papacy to instruct bishops on certain matters and to clarify concerns that seem vague. So this was written by Pope Francis. Now, what does he teach here? He teaches solidarity and fraternal charity. That's what he's teaching here. No. So seeing the situation of the world, he tells us, he encourages us, he teaches us how we can pursue one direction as a people, as a global community, as a world. But before giving that, he lets us realize that we are living under dark clouds over a closed world. Because the clouds the past two years have really been very dark. While the world is closed or was closed because the world was in isolation. We all had to stay at home. We could not, we could not mix with, with everyone because of the fear we might contract, we might contract the dreaded COVID-19. So, um, Pope Francis made us realize of, about the situation in the world and wanted to teach us how we could move forward. So that's that's fraternity. I'm I'm sharing this with you because I'd like to confirm you know, the the realities that I presented to you. Even even the Holy Father has seen and has written about it, has taught about it, that we may know as a global community what to do beyond the circumstances, beyond these conditions, beyond these situations. See, in other words, many of the things that I will be sharing with you will also be a reflection of how we can move forward 
as individuals, as a community, so that we will be able to we will be able to continue pursuing life, uh, not in um, it, with 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 all its with all its promises of of meaning and beauty and resources. Uh, so that that is our aim, in fact. Okay, so if we moving forward. Connecting our connecting our reflection with the slide that I showed, we also get to realize that in the contemporary world, there are a lot of distortions. Like in the in the pictures we see, we we see shanties in some parts of the globe. We see garbage piling up, even in Dumaguete. Um, Sibulan, I think, is is probably better because um, its garbage management um, is is carried out well. Um, but in in some parts of the globe, you see you see contrasts, shanties on the one hand, and in a very modern, progressive city on the other hand. But so these are these. But there are a lot of other distortions, like. Why? Uh, Pope Francis wants us to be aware that the distortions of the contemporary world have ruined what is supposed to be a renewed commitment to global unity and a sense of humanity. Why, is, why are the distortions ruining our sense of humanity and global unity? The distortions are ruining our commitment to global unity and a sense of humanity because basically, essentially, these distortions are caused by selfish motives. So if you, if you realize, my dear fellow teachers, my dear students, I'm starting with, with the realities. I'm starting with the causes that have somehow led the world, that have somehow led the world to become anxious moving forward. But concretely, what are these distortions? First, what we call, I think you and I are already familiar with the throwaway world. No, the throwaway world, these are distortions, why? Because um, they have also, they've also affected even our mindset. We think just because something is disposable, that we can dispose anything, anytime. And as a result of the throwaway mindset, we have also become influenced strongly by that disposable mentality. Like um, abortion is on the rise, even in Dumaguete, because a lot of us think, and I'd like our students in the, in the virtual room to, to really think about this and reflect on this. A lot of us think, especially probably young people, that life can be easily disposed of. No. And that is why I say um, the, the disposable practices and structures we have are, are a distortion in the contemporary world because they've influenced even the way we live our lives. We make decisions. Um, what else? Aside from abortion, um, the killings that are going on around us. We don't have to go beyond the province. In our province, in our city, this is a reality. Because probably some within our sector, some within our communities think life can be thrown away easily and can be disposed of easily. So that's one distortion. So be careful, be careful. And you know, um, it, it's, it's good that we are really pushing for recycling, um, practicing reuse of things. If we can recycle, if we can reuse, then we're good. Now, because slowly it corrects that throwaway mindset, that disposable mentality which is a distortion in the contemporary world. Second is insufficiently universal human rights. That's another distortion. Um, as educators, we need to be conscious about these things. Why? Because when we, 
when we form students, when we take them out of their present condition to better understand the world and its situation, we should be able to lead them to pursue lives that will slowly correct, that will slowly correct practices that build violations of human rights. And that's what education is supposed to do. And I'll show it to you in a bit. Now, so insufficiently universal human rights. Um, I, you know, another distortion I've realized in connection with this is a lot of people are so good with their pets, but can seem to be compassionate with people, with humanity. Don't you see any distortion there? I have nothing against pets, but at least the way we treat human beings should be done better, higher than pets. Because again, um, the, the life, the soul in a human being, in the, in, the, um, in the order of existence, the life, the soul of a human being is the highest. The second is the soul of, in, in philosophy we know this, the soul of the animals. And the third, the soul of plants. So uh, that, that's the order, but ours has the highest level and degree. And so um, we should slowly form individuals thinking along the lines of human rights. Third distortion, the illusion of communication. Now, um, what do we mean by this? The thought that we are communicating when in fact inappropriate improper signals are communicated and people are pursuing directions that can be divisive destructive and confusing what am i saying this um, the holy father is using illusion of communication as one distortion because of his realization of social media we think like using facebook we think just because we can post anything that we can post anything that's an, you know, or we think just because we can post anything that we're communicating. But what about fake news? What about historical distortion? Or sometimes people would say revisionism. See, so the illusion of communication somehow um, gives us the wrong signal that we are communicating when in fact we are sharing inappropriate improper signals the fourth distortion is information without wisdom wisdom is about good judgment wisdom i repeat is about good judgment information without wisdom would somehow lead anybody to just use an information without really thinking if it can help people, if it's for the common good or not. Okay, that, that's, that's why, you know, information for the sake of information can really be a distortion because information is supposed to be used properly and for good judgment to benefit everyone. Okay. The last distortion that I'd like to share with you is globalization and progress without a shared roadmap. Globalization in progress without a shared roadmap means moving forward without feeling the pulse if people truly need something, if people truly um, in, in, um, in unison, no, one with, so that we will be able to address needs. Now, I've always been, I've always been, I've always believed that when we make plans, our plans should be based on people's needs, no, should be needs-based and should be data-driven. to serve and so globalization and progress without a shared roadmap is a distortion we continue now look around you what do you see life problems imperfect life anxiety people have become so anxious because of what's going on around uh, but not only that no people often get wrong signals from the support not from the care and the love extended and shown to them.
No, we we Filipinos love to to support. That, that's why we have extended families. You know, once I was in, I was in. Well, you know, before the pandemic, when I would frequent Hong Kong to give lectures, I could see a lot of domestic helpers. No, um, especially on Sundays in the streets of Hong Kong, uh, Filipinos, Indonesians, you know, um, and many others. One of I asked one of them. I said, how long have you been here? And she said, I've been here for 20 years. I said, why are you here? Um, Father, I am supporting my relatives. I'm sending nephews and nieces to school. Support, care, love for family. Because as Filipinos, that's what we are. However, some people get the wrong signals. Eventually, they end up getting spoiled. They end up getting demanding. They end up not even treasuring what is given to them. Not realizing people working are working hard for them to get a good life. So, so these are the situations, my dear friends, my dear fellow educators, and my dear students. Today, therefore, because of all these situations, people, people are so lost. People are discombobulated. People are confused. Suicide, in fact, is on the rise. Mental health cases are rising. People are frustrated. Situation. Sometimes because of you know, what we think is small, people end up committing suicide. Although to us, some things may be small, but to some people, they may be big. They may be huge and overwhelming. But the point there is factors situations conditions and circumstances have all made us anxious moving forward living life now with these therefore we ask ourselves how do we live our lives how do we how do we what, what kind of perspective should we have in the gospel now, particularly chapter 13 of Matthew verse 24 Jesus shares with us the parable of the weeds among wit. In the gospel, he says, let both weeds and wit grow. What does it mean? While life is imperfect, know that with innate goodness, hope is assured. And so, have faith, trust. Miss Kadimas, at the very start of our session, was saying, we are in a roller coaster ride in life. We are in a roller coaster ride. True. But the roller coaster, the twists and turns of life, make us better individuals. The twists help in shaping us to become better. The turns hopefully will lead us to God to see things according to the perspective of the plan of God and to have faith in Him. Why? Life will always have weeds and wit. Like every individual will always have two sides, like a coin will always have two sides. An individual will always have weeds, will also have, will also have wit. Because truly life is imperfect. But know that with innate goodness, hope is assured. And so have faith and trust. Now, we will have more of this in the succeeding slides. More reflection on faith, on trust, and hope. Another beautiful story in the Gospel, which was... Um, used by Pope Francis in Fratelli Tutti, in chapter 2, is a parable of the Good Samaritan. But Pope Francis in Fratelli Tutti, chapter 2, would title that particular section of the encyclical, of the papal letter, using a stranger on the road as the phrase. A stranger on the road reflecting on talking about the, the parable of the Good Samaritan. My reflection is hope lies, 
where human goodness is. Hope is that seeks to build lives. All 64 of us in this virtual room, because I can see 64 participants, although some probably are sharing the same screen, all 64 of us in the virtual room, at least, have goodness in us. And because we have goodness in us, there is hope in humanity, there is hope in society. We can build lives, we can pursue goodness, because you and I are innately good. And so, every time we see a fallen individual, let us be the good Samaritan. Let us be the stranger on the road who can help anyone. Every time we encounter someone becoming anxious because of how the world has turned out to be, be the good Samaritan, be the stranger on the road. Let me share with you a, an example. No. At the height of the pandemic, I realized on Sundays, ang mga pedicab driver, wala kayo yung mga pasahero. And so I, I thought of something. I said, Luwi po ni sila, the, the rental is 200 pesos. How can they pay even the rental and then maintain the operations through the purchase of fuel if um, if they never make um, if, if they never get passengers. So I said, I'm giving you an idea now. We can also do this. Because I, what I like to emphasize is we can, we can be hope. We can be the hope in times of anxiety and difficulty. So um, every time I'd come to my office here at the Pastoral Center building, um, I would bring a small sack of rice, you know, five kilos. Then I would pay, as soon as I get to the cathedral, I would pay um, sometimes 15 pesos, you know, 20. And then before getting off, I would give that small sack of rice. Malipa yung driver. And I would do that for several Sundays each time I'd go to PHCCI because I have a project sa PHCCI. Every time I'd go there, pag pedicab lang ko, I would bring one sack and then give it to the driver. It sparks hope in a difficult world because hope lies where human goodness can be found. And I'd like to believe all 64 of us can, can truly be sources of hope in an anxious world, can be sources of faith in an anxious world, can be sources of charity in an anxious world. Friends, students, let's embrace that life and let's be the hope that we can be. I have shown you two realities using the previous slides that I've so far projected on the screen, I've shown you two realities. The reality of distortions on the one hand and the reality of compassion on the other hand. But between distortion and compassion lies hope. The factor, the element that is critical to bridge the gap between distortion and compassion is hope. If we live in a world of distortions and we can see beyond us compassion, hope and compassion will be connected to distortion. In other words, there is a way out in hoping. What is the way out in hoping? A lot of things, for example, in, in any educational institution, we are conscious of standards. What is a standard? A standard is a goal. A standard is an expectation. And if we set standards, setting standard is about hoping, is about hope that someday we will hit our goal. Someday we will meet expectations. So my dear friends, set personal standards. In other words, set goals, meet expectations, and life will become better.
That's why if you notice all my slides at the bottom part here, and if you, if you can see this, at the bottom part says, yes, I can. Because we cannot be, we cannot be dragged by anxiety for the rest of our lives. We always have to say, yes, I can. Because we can do it. No. Benchmarking, a good practice, is about hope. Like um, if some of our schools would wish to go to foundation, to benchmark, to find out how things are done in certain aspects, then we are promised with hope. Because if we see something good, like in foundation university, then we know by creating the same goal for ourselves, we have steps to pursue. And so we, we become hopeful Someday, we will also be able to realize what we've seen when we benched Mark. See? So, um, in other words, the anxious world is just one of the realities. It's indispensable. Uh, anxiety in the world is indispensable. It's part of, of the role of life. No, we just have to we just have to see things in the perspective. We can get rid of those realities. But what is what is a good response is how we respond in relation to a world that is full of anxiety, that is anxious. We can we can find out how others are coping. Like, I, I don't know if I've shared this with you. I think Miss Mamida Wu no, of NOHS, because I've, I've seen her, her name you know, and I've chatted her before the start of the, of the session, has heard this when I gave a talk at YMCA. But just to show to you what benchmarking can do, at the height of the pandemic, oh no, when we were starting the pandemic, I did not learn how to cook. But since I could not let anybody in, into, inside my house, I couldn't let anybody enter my house rather, I had to survive. I had to learn to cook, and I did. Una na ko nakatunan, learning how to cook rice. Second, learning how to prepare breakfast, and then eventually lunch, and then eventually dinner. You know, I just realized, to the mothers and wives here, I just realized your job is not easy. Why? You know, preparing like a full meal is like getting into a full production. You prepare the utensils before cooking, you prepare all the ingredients, etc. You start cooking, and then after that, you set the table, you start eating, and then you wash the dishes, etc. You know, like if I do breakfast, by the time I'm done with breakfast, it's 10 o'clock, it's time for me to start preparing for my own lunch. See, but I realized life may be difficult, but there's always a way out. You know, I, 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 I keep saying evil may be a reality, but I always say keep pounding on the wall until cracks are formed. In the process of forming cracks, you realize light can see through, you know, light can enter and the pounding has given you hope that indeed life can be good. Life can be illumined. Okay. Talking about hope now, talking about bridging distortions and compassion, we get to, we are led to a beautiful experience that emerged at the height of our difficulties during the pandemic. What was it? The capability of humanity to assist fellow humans via the community pantry. You know, I, I, again, the past two years, a modesty aside, now modesty, I just would like to share with you some personal experiences. The past two years, God has been so good. Resources have been abundant. Now, even if the world was stalled, resources have been so abundant. Like at the start of the pandemic, I, I was able to organize with some friends a, a, an assistance group. We started coming up with PPEs, face shields, face masks. We distributed them to practically the entire province, so the district hospitals in the province. 
because at that time there were no PPEs, there were no face shields, we had to. We were able to produce you know, using our own resources and, and the resources shared by friends. And at the height of the lockdown in Dumaguete, there were a lot of checkpoints. What I did with, with a couple of friends, I said, let's feed them, let's give them lunch. We were feeding 250 people every day for three weeks, mind you. But it did not, um, you may be wondering, where did I get the resources from? My relatives, my friends were giving me, were giving me money. And, but all I needed to feed 250 people for three weeks was 300,000 pesos. I was able to do that and we would be moving around at the height of the lockdown. There were no cars, nobody was walking. But it goes to show that the spirit is alive and we can do something. Even in this anxious world, we can do a lot. We cannot dampen. We cannot allow anxiety to dampen our spirits. No, we can do a lot. And the pictures you see on the screen are just examples of what we can actually do. Um, at the height of Odette, we were giving food all the way up to Himalalon, Mabina. I even went to Kabangkalan. And water, rice, canned goods, then clothes, um, beddings, kitchen utensils. And then now um, I, I've done with bags of cement for, for, for families to rebuild their homes. Now I'm, I've been going back and forth to the north to build GI sheets. But what is so amazing is, and I say God is good, what is so amazing is resources never stop coming in. I've just distributed 500 GI sheets and hundreds of bags of cement. I'm about to purchase another set. But the point there is, you know, if, if you do good, um, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's an expression in Spanish, Amor con amor se paga. Love begets love. You plant goodness, you harvest goodness. You plant chismis, you harvest chismis. No? You plant um, um, selfishness, you harvest selfishness. The capability of humanity to his fellow humans no, is so manifest and has been so manifest. No? Yesterday, you know, while I was um, preparing some funds to be given to a family to for them to be able to buy construction materials in the north two individual no, three individuals came to my office one brought a huge amount of money for the repair of two schools one in Mabinay one in Tayasan two of our Catholic schools one in Mabinay one in Tayasan so I could purchase construction materials so I called my principals they came I gave them the money I said Provide me with receipts, official receipts, dapat may recibo. So I can give, I can liquidate the fund. Just when the, the, the lady was leaving, no, two other ladies came and brought some money. I said, I have another money, I have another fund no, for, for, to help families rebuild their lives through the purchase of construction materials. God is good. In other words, my dear friends, we can do it. That's why, again, you can see on the screen, yes, I can. Because we truly can help. We're capable of assisting fellow humans, you know, depending, on, depending on our capacity. But God will bless generous hands, generous souls. So go ahead, share, and you'll get more. I tell you, I promise. In other words, with all the things we can do, life need not remain the way it is it can become better there always is that horizon there always is that future there always is that promise we just need to lift a finger to take a step forward and we will get there life need not remain the way it is it can become better and Friends in the virtual room believe in this. And you know, we are educators. You know where I got this? Um, my, my, um, my thesis advisor before, back in my graduate school days, was when we actually introduced this to me. He wrote a book. When I read his book, I realized this one actually, this one, is 
the definition of vision. Life need not remain the way it is. It can become better. And since most of you here are teachers, most of you here are connected with education, then I should say our vision should be something that we want to realize, but then looking back, we should find out if we become better. Because life, the world, need not remain the way it is. It can become better. Spread the word, share this, and let everyone know that this is true and powerful. Hope, therefore, is aspiring for a better life. And we can hope if we believe that there is a better life. We can hope if we trust that there is a better life. Hope is knowing the life to aim for. Hope is getting to the life one aspires for. And back when I was in, uh, I don't know if you, you, you believe in this, but um, back when I was in grade, so I was in grade five you now. I, I studied at what used to be the Dumaguete Cathedral College. And that was where I finished at kinder to grade six. My, my, grade five, my grade five teacher was asking me, was asking us what our ambition in life was. And many of my classmates were in our section were saying, oh, I want to become a doctor, I want to become a teacher, I want to become a lawyer, I want to become a nurse, etc. I never said I wanted to become a priest because it was farthest from my mind. But when, I was, when, it, when it was my turn to be asked, I said, I was asked, oh, um, I used to be called Enrique, what is your ambition? I said, oh, my ambition, ma'am, is I'd like to be able to speak English fluently. That was, my, that was my only ambition in life. And I worked on it. I took the first step, I lifted my finger, I lifted my hand, I always read books. Somehow I was able to realize my, my aspiration, my dream of being able to speak fluently. I never said I wanted to become a priest. I never said I wanted to become a teacher. But with this very basic skill, floodgates were opened up. A lot of, a lot of things came my way. Like... Um, um, was it was it Miss Kadimas or Tita Erlin was talking about um, PLC? No, um, I've been conducting um, PLC coaching sessions now since last year, and just to share with you a concrete example of what hoping can do. No, um, I was taken in by by a company in Manila as consultant of some some schools in Visayas and Mindanao, preparing them for accreditation, preparing them for certification, etc hearing me in one graduation because i was a speaker that the president said let's send him to a plc conference in the u.s so in june i'm leaving and let's hope aspire for a better life and it will be given to you no aim for something really good and it will be given to you because if we do not aspire for a better life we get stuck to a world that is anxious and because that world is VUCA. VUCA is an acronym that stands for Volatility, Uncertainty, Complexity, Ambiguity. The world is volatile. The world is uncertain. The world is complex. The world is ambiguous. What should a Christian's attitude be or what should a believer's attitude be? A believer should be faithful, should be believing, should be hopeful, and should draw strength from the inspiration of people who have been there, who have done that. A lot of people have, have um, passed this way before, and they've encountered the same anxiety, the same volatility, the same uncertainty, the same complexity, the same ambiguity, draw strength from these people and i tell you no amount of vulcaness in the world anxiety in the world can ever stop us from achieving our dreams for realizing our goals and for meeting expectations because 
life is dynamic and powerful, we can do it. Talking about ed education now, let me therefore bring you to one conscious thought. And the thought is, education truly is for social transformation. Um, education, the English word, comes from the Latin educere or educare. And educere or educare mean, or means taking people from their present condition to a better life. That's real education. That's real educare, educere. You take people from where they are now to a better position, to a better life. And that is why education essentially, truly is about social transformation. If our world does not transform to become better, we have not been educating. We have not been educating. We simply have been imparting information, not even wisdom, but information, like what I said a while ago in the previous slide. We've simply been imparting information, no wisdom, because people cannot make good judgment. People cannot transform their lives. So education essentially truly is for social transformation. But let me share with you what Pope Francis has to say about transformation. He would say, social transformation is a hope that can shatter the selfishness of the strong. Because we're supposed to tell the selfish, this is not good. We're supposed, we're supposed to tell the strong, selfishness is not the way forward. So social transformation is a hope that can shatter the selfishness of the strong. The conformism of the weak, really, you know, next month is going to be election month election time but the weak seems to conform with what the powers that be have been dictating have been telling them to do that's wrong their lives will never improve if they continue to conform based on the selfishness of the strong that's not that's not the way forward and that is why my dear teachers let us truly educate that social transformation may become real, otherwise we will always be forever stuck in an anxious world. We will never be able to pull ourselves out of this anxious world. Hope also is about shattering the ideology of the utopians as the only way forward. I repeat, hope means shattering the selfishness of the strong, shattering the conformism of the weak and shattering the ideology of the utopians is the only way forward. Let's transform the world. Let's empower citizens and individuals that they can make enlightened decisions come election time. They can make better decisions in difficult situations because that is what education is all about. Social transformation is about new horizons in which hospitality, intergenerational solidarity, and the value of transcendence can give birth to a new culture. Because social transformation is about creating a new culture in our midst. The way we do things around. Now, if the culture that persisted 40, 30 years ago still persists today, then we've not really been educating. If vote buying in the election, for example, becomes prevalent in our province and people continue to receive money from politicians in exchange of votes, then we have not given birth to a new culture. We have not done social transformation because we've never educated our own people. My dear teachers, let us show them the way. Let us lead them to the new culture where each one of us, each one of them is empowered to make independent decisions for themselves, for the sake of the common good. It's not simply all about believing in an anxious world, hoping in an anxious world, but it's all about concretely 
educating individuals in an anxious world so they themselves can pull them out of this anxious world. Social transformation is the way forward. We cannot conform simply because we are weak and that is why we need to know, we need to make decisions, we need to be educated that we may know exactly what is the proper thing to do, the, the right direction to pursue, and the progress we all need to embrace. Otherwise, our motto will become as it was in the beginning, is now, and forever will be. Like, kung chismosa ka, as it was in the beginning, is now, and in the future, then you have not been educated because you have not transformed yourself. We have not really been heeding the gospel. You know why? Because gospel proclamation is equivalent to social transformation. If no transformation takes place, then we have not proclaimed the gospel. Now, action. Step forward. Let me quote Pope Francis, you know. Um, I, representing the Philippines, I attended the Global Compact on Education in Rome you know, two years ago. In that Global Compact, the Holy Father told us, as we have the space we need for co-responsibility in creating and putting into place new processes and changes, so let us take an active part in renewing and supporting our troubled societies. We have what it takes, my dear teachers, my dear students, we have what it takes to create and put into place new processes and changes. We have the resources, we have the competencies, we have the skills, we have the, we have the power to think. And so let us take an active part in renewing and supporting our troubled societies. So much has been going on. Our pro we don't have to go beyond our province. In our province alone, so much killing. So much has been going on. Let's take an active part in renewing and supporting our troubled societies. We cannot let those in government to do the work. We have to contribute. We have to contribute. And if we think in a larger scale, we have our nation at stake. We have our nation at stake. No, so like if I may, if I may, if I may push this even more, I should say, before believing in anything in social media, clarify sources. Because all these fake news are creating so much trouble in our communities. So sad. I, I, I never realized I'd wake up one morning seeing the kind of Filipinos we have today. So sad. Although we are imperfect, like the weeds and the wit, yes. But we can do something about it. We can clean up the field to slowly remove the we weeds in the field. We can clean up the field. And so friends, People need a North Star. People need a North Star who can guide. In an anxious world, people need a North Star. Be the North Star that you can be. And as Steve Martin would put it, be so good they cannot ignore you. Be so good they cannot ignore you. Because bonum est diffusivum sui. Goodness diffuses by itself. And if goodness diffuses by itself, people will notice you because you're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Even if people put you down, just be good. Because if you're good, you will diffuse. That's a, that's a philosophical principle that explains goodness, the nature of goodness. It diffuses by itself. So be so good that they cannot ignore you. Because as Jesus would say in the gospel, like a light, 
you will always shine. You'll always shine. And as I was, as I promise, draw strength from those who have been through a lot in life. I'm, I'm mentioning here three, three champions because life today needs champions to show people the way to the top. Um, if you have your gadgets with you, if you have your phone, and then you have data, you have internet connection. I'd like you to Google NBA player Karen Butler. Can you Google? NBA player Karen Butler. Ito yung, uh, this is our engagement, no? Um, this is our engagement. Google as well, Holocaust survivor Ellie Whistle. Whistle. No? Google him. Holocaust survivor Ellie Whistle. And then Cody, the miraculous runner. And you'll understand what I mean by hope, faith in this anxious world. Karen Butler lived his life from the streets to the NBA. His life is about the journey from the streets to the NBA. He, he wrestled with authorities. At 15, he was caught with cocaine, he was into drugs, he was imprisoned, etc. because of his lifestyle. But now he's in the NBA. And he's, he's, he's an inspiration to a lot of black people, young people across America. Ellie Whistle, Survived as a Jewish prisoner in Auschwitz, Germany. Um, he survived. Cody McCallan has no legs. He was born with a rare birth defect called sacral agenesis that required both legs to be amputated. But all three are doing well in life now. In other words, we can be champions even with our conditions. One of my greatest fears before was speaking in public, giving sermons. But as a young priest, I could not get rid of that because that was going to be part of my ministry. So I just had to push myself. And I've lasted for 30 years. Next month, I'll be celebrating my 30th year in the priesthood by God's grace. Life needs champions to show people the way to the top. We, were, we never started out as winners. We never started out as champions. But in the course of our journey, we can become champions. The roller coaster ride, the twists and turns can make us champions, can make champions out of imperfect individuals. Go for that. Friends, go for that. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to say it personally. I'd like to say it from, from, from my personal experiences. We all can be champions. I never thought I would get this far in my life. Back when I was much younger, I never thought I'd be able to travel all over the world because of the work I do, because of, the, well, because of my advocacies, because of my, because of what I, I, I offer to communities and to organizations. But these are happening. Because first, I believed in myself. Second, I hope for the best. And third, I was loving and passionate with what I did, what I've been doing. I'd like to invite all of you to become champions as well, to believe in yourselves, to hope for the best, and to be passionate and charitable with everything you do. And people will be able to draw strength from your lives and from your experiences. I came across a, uh, a cartoon movie. And the, the cartoon movie um, was about this grandfather who was telling his grandson stories about trees. And um, finally the grandson said, Lolo, can you show me a real tree? And guess what the Lolo said? Oh, I don't have it. But cross the street, knock at the door of the house across the street, and the person there will show you a tree. So the kid did. 
did not cross the street, knock at the door. Somebody opened the door, another old man. And the old man said, what is it, my child, that you want from me? And the child said, the kid said, I want to see a real tree. And the old man said, wait, I'll get one for you. So when he went back inside, got something, then went back out. And then as he was facing the child, facing the child said, here is your tree. And then the child reacted and said, but that's a seed. And the, the old man said, my child, go and plant the seed and soon you'll have a tree. Because life is not about what it is. It is about what it becomes. It is what you make of life that truly matters. We all make mistakes, you know, we all fall. But what we make of life is what truly matters. Um, how we rise after each fall is what defines us. Is what defines our character. Hope is nurturing resources needed to get where we one wants to be. It is what you make of life that truly matters. And remember this part of the slide. Yes, I can. I can be successful. I can be victorious. I can do it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, St. Paul would tell us, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. God's grace is enough for us. More than enough, in fact. His power can make us perfect even with our weaknesses. Believe, hope, and love. Finally, even in an anxious world, never think we're nothing. Never think God doesn't love us. No. You are blessed. The mere fact that you're alive, you are blessed. And so, Count your blessings instead of sheep. Be grateful because a grateful heart is one who appreciates the blessings that go his way. So be grateful to show that you are appreciating, recognizing the blessings that are coming into your life. And so finally, life is not about what it is. It is about what it becomes. We may be in an anxious world, but it's not all about the anxious world. It's all about how we can make this world a redeeming world. How we can make this world a powerful, productive, meaningful, and beautiful world. Let me go back to the first slide I showed you. Looking at all these pictures, it looks like life is you know difficult and hopeless but no now knowing what we have knowing what we can do we can truly and safely say with everyone renewing and supporting troubled lives and societies are a possibility yes we can we can renew and support troubled lives and societies be the hope that others can look up to that others through through whom others can draw inspiration and strength be the hope that others can look up to let me end my sharing with a with a song again let me let me play this Sa ating 
Thank you very much for listening and for participating in this morning's um, Tita Erlin said recollection or, or PLC or talk or presentation.